Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. I am here with AA Home Gardening, and we're going to be talking about traditional medicinal plants of Jamaica. So if you haven't heard her channel, I'm going to give her a little uh, time to talk about her channel, how it came about, her inspiration, and what we can find on her channel. Thank you so much for the invitation and everything, guys. Thank you. So I'm Anne-Marie from AA Home Gardening. My inspiration to start YouTube actually came from my eldest son because I always garden, but I don't like social media. But he was the one who encouraged me to start YouTube to share all the love of gardening with you guys. And as a Jamaican, even though I'm in the UK, I try to grow tropical Jamaican things. So you can see... I'm trying to grow yam. I grow sugar cane, which is doing really, really well this year. And I grow all the herbs so I can go straight to my garden, to the kitchen. So yes, that's how, that's how I started with the garden because of my big son going online with it. Okay, awesome. So what growing zone are you in now? Equivalent to US 8B. Eight B. Okay. And so what plants do you find do well and which ones maybe don't work as well? Traditional brassicas because I'm in the US, UK. So all the cabbages, all the kale, all those things they do well. The problem is sometimes we have good summer. Sometimes we're not guaranteed a summer in the U UK. It's not like you guys where summer is summer, winter is winter. We don't have that differentiation. So we could have a good summer where sweet corn would do really, really well. Potatoes would do really well. And if you're fortunate, you can have sweet potatoes. But most time you have to have a covering, a greenhouse or a polytunnel to grow certain crops, but anything in the brassical family grows super well in the UK. Okay. Uh, so do you have any tips for beginner um, gardeners, especially if they want to grow some of the more tropical plants? Yes, start with one. So what do you like more? Because what happened living in a cold region, there's a lot of pest issues. You have to try to keep the plant warm in the winter months. So I will start off with just one. For me, I love sugar cane. I don't think there's nothing as nice as sugar cane. So I start growing that one. So the problem is they have to grow it in container because we have to move it for protection in winter. So you start with something you love. And the thing is you have to be open-minded for disappointments because we're growing it out of the comfort zone and we have to learn as we go along. So like the first time I tried sugar cane, it died midway winter. It didn't make it through the winter. Yes, I was disappointed, but I realized what I did wrong. So I did more research. You know, sometimes you can just change a container from like a plastic pot to a terracotta that like can hold the heat and excess moisture, water and things like that, which make it so much better. So just try with the main thing you love and be patient. Because it does take much, much longer than if you're in tropical country. Things like guinea, I grow guinea here. It takes time to germinate, even though guinea would be something that's quick in Jamaica within a week, week and a half. You will see movement, whereas sometime over here, it can take up to a month. So all you need is patience. Yeah, I love that. I love that tip about patience. Um, and yeah, you have to be, you have, the garden teaches you really to be um, flexible. <laughs> and go, you know, so you might try something that should not work, but it works. And so, yeah, it's different for every person. Yeah. Uh, so when you want to try to find some of your traditional ingredients, do you have a hard time? Then it depends on where in the UK you're um, located because like if you go some part in London, you have a wider variety of black, you know, Caribbean people. So you find that some of the supermarkets would cater for some of the ground produce. If you go further north in like England, you don't really have much ethnic. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that it's harder to source your food. So wherever i live i make sure if if i have to go once a month or whatever I source out where i can get my produce because i have to get my jamaican produce especially my seasoning to make sure my food tastes or it should taste that's a yes. 
<laughs> okay, yeah. So is there, I know like in the U.S. we have some ethnic aisles or ethnic grocery stores. Or, um, do you have that? Um, we do that have it, but one? sometimes it's so tiny, just one shelf. That's oh, it. Okay. Okay. You know, it, 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 it is very, okay. If you, As I said, if you're like in you know, the bigger city, you probably can find an entire aisle. Mm -hmm. If you're more further out, you sometimes get one shelf only. And sometimes it's so minimal that if you go midweek, there's nothing. Yeah. Okay. So it's hit or miss. So that's why uh, you like to grow some of your favorite plants. And I'm so glad you have some of them to show us. So which one do you want to start with first? I want to start with my peppers. Okay. So this is a traditional oh, so, yeah. cayenne pepper. But this is way, way tinier. If you can see the size of it, really tiny red peppers that are ready to be harvest. So, you know, in our Jamaican culture, we always use scotch bonnet pepper. That's it. So once you mention rice and peas or red pea soup, you're going to talk about the pepper, which is nice and it have a beautiful flavor. But the bird eye pepper, we go that in Jamaica as well. But that is cayenne. You know, the cayenne have more health benefit. So I tend to use the cayenne, the little pepper show you instead of the original scotch bonnet pepper. So you know with the cayenne, it helps with the digestive system and it actually have a nice flavor as well. So just like you're making your soup, you just put the cayenne pepper in there. You don't have to cut it for the seeds to get super hot. So you just boil it off and then you get the flavor and everything of it. And it actually helps with pain relief as well. So you're using it to season your food. It's helping you with your digestive system. If you have a nagging pain somewhere, it will help with that as well. So it's really, really good. And apparently it's good for weight loss. I haven't seen that yet, but it's good for weight loss as well. So cayenne pepper is really, really good. So we always, we Jamaican love pepper in our food. So it doesn't matter what we're cooking. I think probably the only exception is porridge. So whatever you're cooking, we like the heat, you know? And in Jamaica tradition, we have like curry goat or jerk chicken, things like that. The pepper have to be hot. Okay. So you said you keep the season when you usually use them? So to keep it. You keep the seeds inside or you do you take the seeds? Yes, out? yes, yes. I like the seeds. I like the seeds. Do you, like it it do you usually yes, I have like a mortar? Oh okay. off, or you could blend everything. Oh. But if I'm making like for the kids sometime, I will put it in like when I'm sauteing the onions, put it in to get the flavor, then take it out. So you don't want it too hot for the kids. And then for your portion, now you can just cut up some on top and things like that. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. So which one is hotter, the scotch bonnet or the cayenne? It's a different kick. Oh. Okay. Where this one, you get it straight away. Straight away. Sometimes with the cayenne, you're eating it first. You're like, it's not hot. And then it just kick in suddenly. Okay. So <laughs> it's just a different effect. Oh, the, the hot haze, but yeah, most of them depends. Okay, awesome. Um, and so which herb do you want to talk about next? We have to talk about two together. They don't go separate. Okay. So that's the scallion and thyme. So this is what we call spring onion. In Jamaica, we call it scallion. Okay. And to give you a story, when I came to the UK, I went to one of those um, branded supermarkets. I was trying to find the spring onion, but I only knew it as scallion. And I was there searching, could not find it. Everyone I asked, they were like, I don't know what scallion is. <laughs> so when we're making our traditional food, we do use the normal onions. But as Jamaicans, we tend to lose a lot of scallion. Especially if you're like frying fish or you're making rice and peas, you basically just cut off the root, wash it properly, take off the older leaves. Then you crush everything, put it in the oil to get all the flavoring out of the scallion. And when it's all brown and everything, then you take that out, you know, and then you put in a seasoned fish and everything. And when you bind it in Jamaica, they normally put it together like this. It gets scallion and thyme as the one cost because they go hand in hand. 
Oh, and, wow. That's really interesting. And yeah, I'm glad you're talking about those ingredients because she's sharing her recipe for the, let me make it bigger, uh, for the her Jamaican jerk sauce, as you can see her over here. And she shared her delicious recipe. And so you make sure you check it out in Everyday Herbs, okay? All right, so which one are we talking about next? Oh, you have something just else to before, okay. Just before I'm finished. So this is seasoning, but it's also medicine. So if you have headache, and it's actually a refreshing taste. So if you have headache or anything like that, this good with digestion as well. So you just boil, just take about this portion of it. And you just make a nice brew. You can just add a bit of honey. It helps with the headache. And if you constipated as well, it's really good. So it's medicine and it's seasoning. Yeah, okay, awesome. And so the other one, mm -hmm. this is called Cuban oregano. In Jamaica, we sometimes call it broad leaf mint as well. When you rub the leaf, so you have, I take a leaf off. This is one of the baby leaf. And when you just rub it and against, it's like, it's velvety. It's a bit, it's like a cactus suckling plant feel to it. It's quite fat. The aroma, mm -mm -mm. if you could smell this, it is so nice. And we traditionally use it in stews and soup and things like that. But it's also medicine. You just take a couple leaves and you make a most refreshing tea. My boys love it. You just make the tea and while you're drinking it, you know, because you know, it senses the taste and the smell all work together. So while you're drinking it, it's like the smell just really, really good. And this one really, really good. It's it goes for headache as well. It's called Mexican mint. And they use, you know, over here, they have the pesto sauce and all those things. This is one of the main ingredients to put in there. And the taste is so, so nice. So, so nice. So that's the other one. And if you, if you haven't got the Cuban oregano, you probably can look in one of your local store and I can guarantee you that you will love it. The smell is really, really nice. Okay. Uh, do you want to talk about you can keep going if you want and talk about all the different herbs that you have for us and i want to tell people make sure you leave some comments make sure you leave some comments and have some questions for her <laughs> go ahead okay the ginger the humble ginger everyone loves ginger you can see it's actually growing on there and right here is a ginger plant so most of the herbs that i'm talking about as you can see they're in containers Okay, they're not from the shop, they're in containers. So I grow them in my garden. The same with the pepper, it's in container. Because the thing is, you could get these to buy sometime, but not all the time. Like the bird eye pepper, I've never seen it selling here. They have different types of cayenne, but not the bird eye. The bird eye one is different. So you can't really get them over here. So like the ginger, you can use a top, while away for the rhizomes to develop. And everyone knows, sometimes you're feeling a bit nauseous or you're not feeling good or you just have this feeling that's not quite right. Ginger tea. Ginger does wonders for the body. And the thing is, you know, like whole salt, when you, when you have cooking your food, you could put all the seasoning in, but if there's no salt, something just missing because the salt and ants make it taste better, okay? Ginger is very similar, especially for making things like cookies or something like that. When you put the ginger in, you just give it a kick. It's very, very good. And as I say, you know, with ginger, it just help with like not nauseous feeling or anything like that. Ginger is quite good. And if you're having bloating issues or anything like that, a nice cup of ginger tea. Really, really nice. Awesome. We have a quite oh you can you can keep going if you have something else to say about ginger. And then we have a question for you as well. About ginger. Yes, it's just it's just ginger. And the thing is, you have to be aware of most of the ginger on the market. They don't even smell like ginger. Ginger is not difficult to grow, guys. So right. you just buy the ginger, you leave it out. If it started growing like this, then it's the head start. 
even if it's not on it you can just put it in the compost and it will grow and while you're waiting you can use it it's worth growing and if you have colds and flus or anything like that then a nice brew of ginger tea all right um i'm gonna go ahead and share my screen really quickly i want to show your channel for a second here so her channel is AA Home Gardening. Look how green all her beautiful plants. She has so many different videos showing you how to grow some of her favorite plants that we were talking about today. Like I can see, she talks about the sugar cane. We have lemongrass here as well, yams. And she has um, some short videos as well so you can see that her lovely harvest. So definitely make sure you check out her channel and i do have a link down in the description as well all right let's answer this question and then we can uh continue carissa mm -hmm. says would you recommend bathing in time for headaches as well i'm not sure if that's a strange question she says great information and thank you uh for your comment carissa i always love to see you hello that's an interesting question actually i have thought of it because i know sometimes i have different diseases like mums or measles we sometimes bathe in certain herbs to smooth the skins and things like that. Mm -hmm. I kind of see where it would be an issue, but I've never done it. I haven't researched around it. But I think the aroma from the steaming of the bath definitely will help with the headache. I don't know per mm -hmm. se if the time is what contribute to it. But I would do it internally, but just having a nice relaxing bath, bath definitely helps. Yeah, I think so. That's exactly what I was thinking to the steam and everything. So yeah, have a nice steamy bath or you can also just do like a face steam. Um, mm -hmm. That's really good. And sometimes they even do foot salts. So mm -hmm. sometimes you can relieve the pressure from your head by doing mm -hmm. putting your feet in it as well. So yeah, and definitely yeah. try some with some time. And then add some Epsom salt to the bath. Those wonders. Yes. All right. So uh, which one do you want to talk about next? garlic garlic everyone uses garlic most people don't like to handle the garlic so they probably buy the one that's pre-prepared already but this itself you know normally when people start in the dishes they most times saute the onion then had the garlic and things like that but this is natural immune system booster you can have garlic tea on its own with a bit of honey is an acquired taste but you can blend it with some turmeric, some ginger, and it just, because if you have a strong immune system, you fight off most conditions. For us who live in colder region, I'm never out of garlic. Never. So you can just make a brew with it, or you can make certain type of concussion, blending them up if you don't want to boil them. And you can keep it and take teaspoon or a tablespoon daily to keep your system going. So this is the garlic. We don't grow a lot in Jamaica because usually sometimes the garlic require the cooler season to help it to bolt. But what we do in Jamaica to mimic that scenario is to put the garlic in the fridge. So we have it in the fridge and ideally let it start sprouting in the fridge. Then we move it to the garden so we can grow our garlic in the tropicals um, because Jamaica is hot all year round. If we probably in the December period make it a cool breeze, but it's still hot. But we use a lot of garlic and we do grow our garlic in Jamaica as well. And I have a question for you. So you you mostly grow in containers. Is there a certain reason? Is it for watering or maybe the soil or you just prefer to grow in pots? There's pros and cons for all the tropicals. I don't have a choice because i have to move them for covering when winter comes right so if i have a lot more challenge doing it because it's like you have lots of insects like aphids and spider mites and scale insects and all those things because it's in a compact situation where you just want to go free but i'm restricting it you get what i'm saying right. and then when they take it indoor in winter then the environment is a bit too humid or too dry or lots of things going against it so there's a lot of challenge growing in container but i don't have a choice because things like my sour sock those are truly tropical things like the sugar cane the yam the dashin the cocoa you know those things i grow them and they're in container then i move them indoor for winter some of the other things i grow in container is because previously the space was too small and i want to put a lot of things in the garden 
and I have to put them in containers so to put some on the patio area, some in the walk area, and different different things like that. But I do grow some in the ground as well. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do you have a poly tunnel as well? Yes. Okay. And I have green house and things like that. But previously, okay. I didn't have any. So right. all I did was like some year we have frost really really late in my zone the first week of may frost should be finished but sometime end of may we still get frost so what i did before i have polytunnel was just to have the normal bin liner so you'll watch the weather if frost is predicted i just take the normal black bin liner any bin liner and just cover the pots that they're in or cover the area they're in to mimic a greenhouse scenario and that will protect the plants from the frost. Okay. Uh, hey, Gina. Gina versus Gina just came in. Thank you for joining. And Sela, she has a question. She says, are you using the five-gallon container? I use every size, five-gallon, ten-gallon, smaller ones, because like you can see, this is just a small tiny pot. And... This one, I'm just overwintering it now, and this is a tiny pot as well. So what I did, depend on the plant, like for instance, the lemongrass, which I'm going to next, it doesn't require a lot of, it doesn't have a massive root mass that needs space. It doesn't mind to be, it doesn't mind being restricted. So I can grow it in a smaller container because I normally grow it per season. This year, I'm gonna overwinter it, to give it a head start next year. So if I'm successful, the next year I put in a bigger container for the length of time. But because most of the things are just seasonal, then I grow them in smaller container. Things that are year on year, then I put it in bigger container. So like my sugar cane is in a bigger container because when you harvest, you always have new shoots coming up and the harvest staggers and continues. So I put those in bigger containers. And those are like a 50, probably a 15 gallon container okay all right are you ready to show us your lemongrass oh yes <laughs> there it is it looks like sugar cane but it's not so that's my lemongrass and the lemongrass itself it have sharp edges just like the sugar cane so you be careful how you rub your hands against the leaves and things like that. And it's it's similar to Cuban oringana in the sense that the smell is so refreshing. So if you're making things like stir fry, it could be a vegetable stir fry, things like that. You just take a bundle, you just crush it up to release the fragrance, then you put it in, and then even at the end of the same dish, you can take some and you make a a brew with it and the tea is so nice if you go to like thai restaurants or anything like that they normally have lemongrass on the menu but you can use it as a mosquito repellent as well because you know in jamaica we have a lot of mos mosquitoes sorry okay. and you don't sometimes want to put it, the chemicals on the skin and all those things to get rid of the mosquitoes it's natural you just use the lemongrass like just at the bordering of the house, they put the lemongrass right there. Mosquitoes don't like it. It's really, really nice. So yes, I love my lemongrass. My lemongrass is really good. And it's also good for relieving pain. So if you're having some joint pain, you can make, um, you can drink it as it is. I don't like any sugar in my tea, even though I have natural sugar like stevia that I'm growing as well. But you can put a bit of onion in there and it helps with your pain. If you have like a swollen leg, you know, have to be careful. You're not doctors and usually they're underlying condition, but this can help with swelling as well. And it helps to regulate your blood pressure. It is so good. Mother nature gives us so much things to help <laughs> us. So, so good. All right. Um, are you going to talk about turmeric still too? Yes, I have my turmeric plant outside and I forgot to take it. So it's similar to this, but it's a broader leaf. We don't tend to get turmeric powder like in the... In the west over here we can get turmeric powder through the sprinkle on our dishes like that we normally get the rind zone just like the ginger and then we just have to get like a mortar crush it up and then when we're making our dishes then we add it to it or you can actually crush it first then put it into a sieve 
juice it out and then use the juice. And most people would know that turmeric is good for inflammation. It could be inflammation of the joints, the muscle, wherever it is, turmeric is so good. And the thing is, you can make turmeric milk as well. There's so much things you can do with it. And it's a natural, you know, if you're making things like Jamaican patties, and you want that nice yellowish color, you don't have to use food coloring, you don't have to use anything like that. You just use the turmeric powder and you get that nice color. And it's, it's, it's nice, I like the taste of it, you know. I put it in my soup, I put it in my stew, I put it in so much things because I know it's helping my digestive system as well. So I use a lot of turmeric. But in Jamaica, we get it the best way because we normally get the fresh one, not the powder one that's over here. So I grow my own as well, and then I can just pick and leave and harvest when I like it, when I want it. Okay, awesome, awesome. So I'll give you guys some time to add some questions here. I do have her channel linked, so it is linked in the comments there, so you can check it out. Um, and I also have it linked in the description if you are watching afterwards. I wanted to ask you about your mortar and pestle. Do you use a wooden one, or do you use like um, a stainless steel? Which do you prefer? I use like a stone, a proper one. A stone, okay. Can you manage to take it for a moment? A proper one. So <laughs> like this week I was making, I'm making gingerbread man for my boys. The boys don't like the string a bit in the ginger. So I took it, scrape it because if I grow it myself, I would not scrape it. But I bought the ginger I was using. So I just scrape it, wash it, put it in the mortar, crush it properly and then take a sieve and take the juice to make the gingerbread man so i use a proper one which is super super heavy oh, okay yeah and huge and it stays <laughs> used <laughs> so yes a proper one <laughs> so yeah because sometimes you know with the like pimento i don't have the pimento tree but i cannot go without talking about our pimento because when you go to jerk or anything we call it all spice. Some people call it all spice, the pimento. But sometimes when they get the powder form, it doesn't even smell like pimento. The smell is so vague. So you get the, the, the seeds, then you grind it. And it's much better to use that one than the powdered one. Because most of these seasoning, when they process it into powder, um, the strength of it goes very, very quickly. So that's why this is very important. So you know, you're making pesto sauce with a basil, the parsley, everything. You just go to the garden, you harvest it, take a bunch in the hand, wash it, and then crush it up yourself. Right. But yeah. Yes, you yeah. And so most of the, when you're using these herbs for seasoning, they're mostly fresh. Mostly, is yes. it 100% fresh usually? If you can, right? Yes. If you can oh, it. yes. Okay. So awesome. I have oregano, I have basil, you have parsley, I have my loads of the other seasons some at the front some at the back so wherever i go there's seasoning there's my ginger there's my turmeric there's my mint there's my pepper you name it it's in the garden right okay so i don't see any questions so i'm gonna let you go i know your family is hungry and <laughs> waited on you uh, so um thank you so much thank Cole, you very much for having me yeah and sharing um your expertise and uh, your expertise and showing us the proper way to um, grind up our uh, seasonings and how to use them. All right. So thank you, everybody, for joining. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Okay.